Well, folks, it was fun while it lasted. I did a review of these DT71 SMD tweezers a few months back, and had not done much with it since. But when I pulled it out the other day to do some measurements, it appeared that it was not working. I did notice that when I plugged it in for charging, the LED on the tweezers did not light up. I didn't notice that before to know for sure whether it was working initially or it was bad all along, but now I guess it is definitely not charging anymore. So this begs the question why the designer thought it was a good idea for this kind of a complicated design, and I truly think Miniware overdid it trying to solve a problem that did not exist at the first place. They could have just made everything into a single piece and make it a little bit bigger. And to be honest, it would probably be cheaper as well, as they didn't have to come up with these convoluted ways to hide components throughout different parts of the unit. And because everything essentially is glued together, as you probably have seen in Dave Jones' destructive teardown of the DT-71, you can't really fix it when the situation like what I had just run into arises. But as you can see, the head is definitely still functional, as when I plug it into the charger cable, it boots up. So I'm pretty certain the issue is that somehow either the charging circuit has some issue or there is an issue with the battery, and the battery is dead now, so you can't power this thing up. And because we cannot really disassemble the unit without destroying it, I'm thinking I might just at least try opening up the area where the batteries are located, and at least see what the issue was. Well, that was quite a bit of effort, but the good news is that I managed to open it up without damaging the structure. It appears that the pieces were just lightly glued up together. And by looking at it, I should be able to solder a couple wires at the battery terminal directly and give the batteries some charge. And I just used a bench power supply to charge the battery for a while, and uh, right now we should have enough charge on the battery. So let's take a quick look here. Yep, we have 3.8 volts, and the battery is specced at 3.7 volts, so that's definitely enough. And uh, by the way, the reason I'm only charging one side is because these two sets of batteries are essentially connected in parallel. So let me show you that. So let me put into continuity mode, and uh, let me just show you here the positive, and uh, let's uh, buzz this out. As you can see, they're connected, and also the negative terminal as well. So the negative. Yep. So, as I said earlier, these are connected in parallel. So now with these batteries charged, we should be able to plug in the head and uh, power it on. So let's give it a try. Yep. As you can see, the unit powered up with no problem. So clearly the issue that caused this unit not to be able to power up is because the charging unit somehow was not working correctly, and therefore the batteries got drained. Unfortunately though, I think this is as far as I can get in terms of a quote-unquote fixing the problem, as this unit is totally glued on, as you saw how delicate everything is put together, and I don't think there's a chance for me to open up this unit any further without damaging the mechanism. So unfortunately, I won't be able to do that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to either drill a hole on the inner part of uh, this piece and uh, to wire this uh, wire out so that at least I have a way to charge it in the future if I need to. Now, of course, I might just uh, 
get another connector and uh, so that I don't have to have this loose wire dangling somewhere. But that's the plan. And if you take a look at the construction here, you will see just how over-engineered everything is. In my opinion, that is totally unnecessary. For example, they use two batteries in parallel instead of just using one battery. Of course, the one battery capacity may not be enough given the space here, but they separate out into two batteries that increase the complexity quite a bit. They are connected via this very thin flat flex cables and uh, you will see that also because of the limitations in the construction here, you have these two mounting holes they have to go through onto the body and uh, the metal screw actually goes through this uh, flat flex cable here. Every added component adds a complexity of the system and for a battery charging and supply module, this complexity is an overkill. And uh, I just uh, put everything back together Luckily, every piece actually clips back rather nicely without having to apply any glue. And you can see here, I did put a little hole onto the panel so that I can route the wires up. And of course, I will add some kind of connector in the future. But right now, let's uh, plug it back in and see if it still works. And it uh, looks like uh, no problem. And old measurement, as you can see, it still works. Excellent. So I'm thinking once I get a connector ready, I probably want to just mount it uh, here. I can shorten the wires and so that nothing is dangling. And we should be able to charge the battery externally. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and share. I will catch up with you next time.